Hello everyone and welcome to our continuing lecture on Contemporary World. Today we will be tasked to synthesize your concepts on globalization in one page a synthesis essay so that uh, it will be about 300 words. One of the most tedious tasks you will face is to synthesize information. But to do this as a teacher I would require academic honesty in your writing since with the advent of internet it is very easy to check if the material is plagiarized or copied and pasted word for word. Synthesizing simply means combining. Instead of summarizing the main points of each source in turn, you put together the ideas and findings of multiple sources in order to make an overall um, point. What is the main difference between a summary and a synthesis? What's the difference between these two? A summary simply restates the information in one or more sources without providing new insight or commentary or not even reaching new conclusions, while a synthesis draws different sources to reach a broader conclusion with your commentary. Simply put, synthesizing means combining, but instead of summarizing the main points of each source, in turn, you put together the ideas and findings in order to make an overall point. For example, you want to prove that globalization is indeed harmful. You will look for sources that prove that. This type of synthesis is called argument synthesis. If you only want to explain the effect of mass media towards globalization, that is simply an exposition or explanatory synthesis. When you talk about sources, we look for scholarly journals, reliable sources of information, and the internet to solidify our thesis or statement which you want to prove or explain. When you research a subject, you have been taught that it is not advisable to use Wikipedia. Um, Wikipedia as a source because it can be edited by anyone at any time. Any information it contains at a particular time could be could be um, against academic uh, standards. So it's it's a work in progress or it's just plain wrong. At the most basic level, synthesis involves looking for similarities and difference between differences between your sources. A good synthesis can be done by taking ideas from various sources summarizing them and combining them into a thesis statement. A thesis statement is a single position that the, th that the synthesis essay is trying to argue. For example, globalization has widened the gap between the rich countries and the poor countries. Another example, COVID-19 pandemic is the end of globalization. Another example, migration has caused the diffusion of culture. In this assignment, I want you to find a connection of the concept of globalization to anything that it affects. One, it is easy to connect since you are all well versed on globalization. Your challenge, therefore, is to find that connection. Again, your goal is maybe to explain or to present an argument. There are two types of synthesis as we mentioned a while earlier. The first is explanatory and the second one is argument. An explanatory synthesis is a type that helps readers to get a better understanding of a topic. Instead of arguing a point, the goal here is to explain a particular topic. In the body, you will explain the topic using sources and present these sources objectively. For ease of doing this, I would require you to have at least two sources. Like in any regular writing assignment, back up each supporting claim with two or more credible sources. Example, the relation between globalization and culture. Another example, impact of globalization to side education or education in general. The second type is argument synthesis. The goal of argument synthesis is to present contradicting statements of a specific topic and justify it with evidence. Unlike the explanatory type, here he will do the same thing you would do if working on a regular argumentative paper. What do you do in an argumentative paper? State your position, make supporting claims, and then provide credible evidence to back up each claim. For example, COVID-19, is it the end of globalization? For example, globalization has bad effects on local products. How to choose a topic according to Elsie, pro.com. A synthesis paper prompt must be debatable. Depending on your topic, you may have to choose a primary text. You need to say you're going to choose a source. So choose a source, um, a scholarly journal, or it can be a book that, that might have opposing viewpoints of a particular topic. Step number one, browse through topics and ideas. 
read from sources and check selected topics in depth to see if any of them take your interest. Step number two, choose a topic. Then gather relevant and useful sources to include in your synthesis paper. Step number three, apply ideas from the sources into your synthesis essay outline. Doing so should be or should make writing far easier and save your time. Check the connection between these two concepts, globalization and poverty. Does globalization widen the gap? Does affecting it? Does globalization cause poverty? Or is it globalization the cause of reduction of it? Or is globalization reducing poverty? Poverty. For example, you think that globalization reduced world poverty. That itself is your building block in your thesis statement. Is globalization destroying the environment or protecting it? What if your thesis statement is, globalization is causing the degradation of the environment? Do you have available sources which you can use to support that question? Do I need to put my opinion? Yes. You can put your commentary only if you have cited sources relevant to the argument. Can I just use any source from the internet using my zoom zoom power? Of course not. When you are doing a literature review or theoretical background in the past in a research paper, your research teacher would always recommend you to use the search engine called Google Scholar. It is a free and freely accessible web search engine that indexes the full text of scholarly literature across a, a group or an array of publishing formats and disciplines. Of course, and since some of these are copyrighted, chances are you only see a portion or an abstract of the entire paper. Don't worry. By reading the abstract which contains the objective, the method, the discussion, conclusion, and findings alone, you can mine gold. You can get a rich gold of ideas from there that will help you solidify your paper. If you haven't used this type in our um, if you haven't used this type of, of browser, you just type www.scholar.google.com. The Google Scholar database offers a wide and wealthy source of information for you. Although you can use other open access journal portals or library like JSTOR, the Google Scholar is pretty much a good start. For those who are adept in researching, they use what we call Boolean search, B-O-O-L-E-A-N. Boolean search is a structured search process um, used to narrow down searches with the use of words such as and, or not to limit or plus sign to define the search engines. Boolean search allows the combination of five different elements to conduct a research or a, to conduct a search and utilize a search engine to its fullest potential or fullest potential rather. Here I am using a plus sign since I am looking for academic researchers in works relating to globalization or relating globalization with the environment. So globalization plus environment. Take note that the bottom part, you can see the citation count for the number of articles or scholarly journals that use this source. The higher the citation count, the more reliable the source is. Use it. If it is below 100, suspend your judgment. There is a greater chance that the paper is not peer reviewed, reviewed, or has not been thoroughly reviewed. Your next step is to skim over them, skimming. You can read these sources, but you can use the technique of skimming. When you, when, you do, when you do skimming, you read to find specific information. You go over the site, look for statements that you think support your thesis statement, but if you like, if you love to read, go on. Now, this slide presents sources appearing in Google Scholars with low count of citations. Please be careful not to fall into the trap of using them. So while you are browsing, of course, you will see that you don't find the connection of what you're reading yet to the tremendous volume of information you can find. No problem. The more you read, the better for your understanding of the concepts. And if you think you need to change the topic with, uh, in the middle of your searches, since you stumble across a very interesting topic, do so. The goal here is to spark the interest of reading and the culture of researching. Here I got two excerpts from researchers. One is Environment and Globalization, an electronic copy of a book, Three Authors and the Right Side is from Help Save Nature. My goal is to prove that while globalization is helping us, us move economically, it has taken a blow on our environmental aspect. 
The problem now is to combine the two while citing my sources. I think I will use connecting words like however, furthermore, in contrast, in addition to, but, etc. in order to have a better flow of my thoughts. Remember in paragraph writing, unity, coherence, and proportion are key qualities. Unity meaning one topic, coherence, logical arrangement of sentences, and proportion always start or always give important importance to um, relevant information. So again, research evidence, analyze as many ideas as possible. When you analyze, you examine a single topic by its parts. Read essays on Google Scholar. Write down what you know. Then if any idea stands out, apply it to a synthesis outline. Talking about an outline, creating an outline will be useful for structuring your synthesis paper and planning your work. Make sure every aspect proves the claim of your thesis. And any extra information will only make your paper worse. If the information goes against your idea, then you should acknowledge it. If it will make your paper stronger. Make sure you check all of the sources you've picked carefully. When writing about the causes, do not summarize them. Analyze them. Read further for simple synthesis essay outline. The basic synthesis essay outline template contains three major parts. The introduction with the thesis statement, the body which contains arguments and counter arguments to the thesis, and conclusion. The introduction is an, out, um, an outline for the in synthesis essay starts with an introduction, which is a brief description of what the paper will be about. It will consist of a hook, a background and relevance of your topic, and a thesis statement. In this example, the hook is the first sentence followed by supporting details and ends with a thesis statement in red text. Remember that a well-directed synthesis always includes a thesis, which is the central argument of, um, of the entire paper. Your thesis should be the core argument of separately sourced thesis. Here we can work on the next part, which is the body. The first paragraph must present a counter-argument to your thesis. This demonstrates your ability to think from an opposing point of view, which can be greatly valued in higher educational facilities. Be, make, sh make sure to note that the counter-argument isn't strong enough to discredit your thesis. For better presentation, present your argument like this. Supporting argument, evidence, analysis of evidence. Example, globalization destroys environment. What evidence can you present? Number of trees being cut, statistics, biodiversity affected, then analyze how they should be an issue of concern. Lastly, a good conclusion should be a summary of the overall paper. Then conclude the paper with a final sta statement or sentence. In other words, restate the main points and address any unanswered questions. Plagiarism is an academic crime that should not be tolerated. If we copy from sources, it is okay to cite where you got it from. In your research, you dedicate a section where you place your sources, either in references or bibliography. For sciences, we use the American Psychological Association format. Sources should be written once they are cited in your text. Again, if you use the authors, cite them. Cite them. The format as follows for reference entry. Author's last name, comma, initials. Year of publication in parenthesis. Title of the works in italics. Website and uniform resource locator or URL. In some cases, writers will use DOI or digital object identifiers. Digital object identifiers, which is a series of letters and numbers found at the search results. For in-text citation, meaning you quote the source word for word, you can use parenthetical with author's last name, comma, and year of publication. If you use the source as part of your narrative, meaning you mention the author's name in the text, indicate its last name, and put the year of, of publication inside the parenthesis. The example as follows. Of course, um, here are the tips in writing your synthesis. Avoid tightening the assignment as synthesis essay followed or preceded by a relevant title. Remember to address your readers appropriately. So it has to be using very polite languages. Use precise vocabulary. Don't be shy to use thesaurus or dictionary. 
use a clear sentence structure. Avoid using passive voice. So subject, verb, object. Proofread and correct errors, spelling, comma errors, or subject, verb agreements, etc. Um, here you avoid the use of you because you have to make sure it's objective. So speak from the third person point of view. The writer says instead of I or for example like that. Make sure your citations are correct using APA. It's so alphabetical order. Make sure make use of sentences and paragraph transitions. The next slide will present the rubrics for grading. So good luck on your um, 300 to 500 word synthesis. Thank you.